Hi, my name is Jake Collins. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm working on breaking down walls in esports, games, and digital education here at my startup, Liminal Esports, in Cleveland, Ohio. I was five years old in 1989, and a video of protesters smashing the Berlin Wall was one of my first memories of global events. I remember standing there in front of our little TV next to my parents watching and recognizing for the first time ever there's a whole world out there beyond our little rural community here in Ohio. A whole world that I didn't know. When my partner and I traveled to Berlin many years later, I had the opportunity to stand there right at the line between East and West Germany. And as a Jew, as someone who's queer, as someone who's transgender, I felt this tremendous amount of hope that this hatred, that these divisions, that they can be overcome together. I wanted to become myself. I know that's weird, but it took me so long to find out who that person was and eventually come out to the world. I wanted to become someone who wasn't afraid to be an advocate and who wasn't afraid to help others. Today, I feel the greatest pride when I see my students take those same steps towards becoming an advocate. When I worked for Secretary of Education John King under President Barack Obama, my office's role at the Department of Education was to advocate for equity and civil rights in educational technology. What I discovered was that only a small fraction of students are receiving the best types of digital education. High quality simulations, virtual reality science experiments, community building game competitions, and importantly, funding and scholarships for university programs. The students who are being left behind, particularly girls as well as transgender and gender nonconforming students, are losing out for no reason other than how they were born. Our research seeks to break down those gender barriers and other inequities by supporting students, by supporting educators, and by supporting research that shows that the gender barrier in between games and education is largely an imaginary one. Revenue from competitive video games, also called esports, was over $1 billion this year. And in the next few years, it's estimated that there will be over $100 million available to American students for esports scholarships to college. When I looked at those numbers, I asked myself a really basic question. Where are the girls and where are the transgender students? So I went to find out. I went to teach at an all-girls school and help the students there start the first ever esports team at an all-girls school. My students knew that they could do it, but time and again, we kept hearing, girls don't play games. So we built a tool research tool that would allow teachers to measure the impact of games in their classrooms. Which students benefited? Which felt left out? Why? We want to know, and our evaluation tool will help us find out why the benefits of this next frontier of digital education are going to some boys, but not to other students. My vision for the future is that all types of children will have access to the best types of interactive digital education including esports, that I can walk into a school and ask to see their gaming, simulation, and virtual reality lab, and that the lab exists, and not to be surprised to see girls and transgender students working and playing there, that I can walk into a game studio and see those same girls and transgender students become a part of that billion dollar industry that years before told them that these games weren't for them. I believe that tools like ours, which help teachers explore the effects of games on youth at the classroom level, will help build this future. There is so much left to do. My personal hope is to find those champions and voices aligned with our mission so that we can raise up our voices together and ensure that every child has access to high quality, interactive digital education.